So there are very few things in life that you can basically put money into once and then that one thing pays you money forever. And that sounds pretty good, right? And it kind of sounds like almost like a Bernie Madoff scam. I say, hey, give me your money. I'm going to invest it. You get paid forever, no risk, bring more people. But I promise that's actually not what this video is, all right? These are very like boring ways to make money and they work for a very long time because the risk is actually pretty low and the only way you lose is if, if the country as a whole, America, the whole world kind of crashes. And at that point, nothing really matters as much, all right? So expect boring in this video, expect to do something that actually works long term and that's the whole idea, that's the prospect here. Now as always guys, do me a favor and smash the like button. If you're new here, subscribe, hit the else you get notified. Now, number one is going to be investing into the S&P 500. Now, when you put your money in the S&P 500, you're literally buying the 500 largest companies in the US. Now, this fund is actually pretty cool because every single year, these companies may change, all right? Some companies may be higher, some companies may go bankrupt, might go lower, and then another company is just going to replace it. So overall, it's like you just basically invest your money once, and then the fund manager takes care of the rest, because what they do is, not really a lot, they basically just make sure they keep track of those 500 companies, which are going to be the largest. If one pulls up more, then that one get replaced, and then so on and so on. It's pretty simple. Now, because it's simple, it's also low cost. Now, these funds usually cost way less than 1%. Now, you can invest either with Vanguard, which is the one I use, that's my favorite broker, but you also have Fidelity, you have Schwab's, and my advice would be, you want to invest with a big broker you trust, you understand, and has been around for a very long time. I don't do the Robinhood, I don't do the M1 Finance, I don't do the Acorn, I don't do small apps, I really like doing, for example, the big companies, it's basically money you're gonna be investing for a very long time. Now, the question is, Tommy, how much money does the S&P 500 actually make you? The answer is for the past 70 years or so, it's made about 10.53% or so. So it's a pretty good average boring return. I told you guys, all right? But to make $100 per month, how much money would you need to have invested? The answer is around $30,000. For every $100 you wanna make per month, you need to have around $30,000 actually invested. Now, it's not that simple because you actually need less but with the math, you actually need more. Here's what I mean, all right? I don't wanna complicate it, all right? So when we actually talk about stocks, we follow something called the 4% rule. And that basically means that whatever the amount of money you actually have, we only take out 4%. Now remember, so far, the past 70 years or so, it's made around 10%, right? So you're making 10% annually on average, but you only take 4% of the profits, that leaves you 6%. That 6% allows for their investment to keep on growing and growing and growing so you never run out of money. So the basic math is this, okay? So if you're gonna be doing this so you never run out of money, you obviously don't wanna take out all the money. So if you wanna make $100 a month, you multiply that by 12, that's 1,200. And if you're only gonna take out 4% of your profits, right, then divide that by 0.04, that means you need to have around $30,000 invested. Now, if your goal is going to be to make, for example, $1,000 a month, then obviously you're going to need 1,000 per month times 12 divided by 0.04, right? That's going to be around $300,000. Now, simple way to do it is, a thousand, <laughs> just multiply. If you need if you need a hundred dollars, it's thirty thousand. So thirty thousand times ten is three hundred thousand dollars because you actually want a thousand dollars a month. All right. Now, how long will it actually take you to actually do that? The answer is pretty simple. If you invested, for example, to try to get your first hundred dollars, if you're investing a thousand dollars, it'll take you about two and a half years or so. If you're investing five hundred bucks per month then it'll take you about five years or so to actually get to your first 30 grand. But the cool, the cool thing about compound interest is as, as time passes, it just goes massive and massive and massive, all right? But overall, if you invested $1,000 per month for 10 years at a 10% return, at the end of those 10 years, you would have run a whopping $210,000. Now, obviously, how much money is that like per month? Well, you know, $210,000, multiplied it by 0 0.04, 
that gives you around $8,400 divided by 12. It's around $700 per month, okay? That's the math. If you don't believe me, 8,400 divided by 12 is $700, all right? I'm not a genius. I just did the math beforehand so I can be ready and prepared to actually give you guys this information. But making $700 per month might not sound like a lot of money for the average person, but if you're working, for example, 20 hours a week, right for i mean not a week if you're making 20 bucks an, an hour well divide that by 20 that's around like 35 hours that you don't have to work anymore that's like almost like a week worth of work you're not working so you might be able to go part-time in like 10 years and not have to worry that much about it now here's number two number two is going to be rental property now your first rental property can be your first home now, what I mean is the average person usually moves out every five years or so. Now, honestly, I don't like this idea. I really want to stay somewhere for a long time. I am tired of moving. I have moved like three, four times in the past like two years. I just want to be somewhere and just stay there for a long time. Moving absolutely sucks, okay? But overall, the idea is a simple one, all right? You have option A. Option A is you buy your first home, you pay that one off, and then you can basically move somewhere else and just rent that home right there, all right? That makes you some passive income. Now, I don't like it because you give up what you already have to buy something else, you have to pay the mortgage on now, and you're basically just making on a lot of risks. Now, what I would prefer is actually this, all right? I would actually prefer to go ahead and basically start taking money from my investment account once the home is actually paid off, along with my savings, and basically try to buy a property every so often, all right? So here's the math. Now, option B, I actually like a lot more because it actually takes like little to no risk in a sense. But the idea is if you paid off your personal home, you have free cash flow. You could use the money you used to put down for the mortgage. You could use that money now for your general savings. Now, if you just spent $1,000 on your mortgage, well, that's $1,000 you can now save, which is basically $12,000 every single year, along with taking 4% from your portfolio. Let's say that's $700 per month or $84 a year. Once you add up, for example, your savings of $12,000 plus $8,400 from the market that you're actually gonna be taken out, the answer is you can actually save $20,400 every single year. Now, if you're actually looking to buy, for example, apartments and so on for like 60K, not that much money, right? The goal should be try to basically get at least 8% return on your deals. Now, if you actually are paying cash, the answer is you'll be able to buy a property about every three years or so. In three years, you'll have $61,000, all right? If you buy a property that makes you around 8%, the answer is you can actually make an extra $4,800 a year divided by 12, that's around $400 every single month, okay? So now, you're looking at every three years, I could buy a property and pay cash for it. That brings me in $400 of free cash flow. Well, not really free cash because you have to pay, for example, the insurance and um, the tax and so on, but I'm just, for simplicity's sake, 400 bucks, now you're making extra, right? You still have savings. Well, now you can grab that money plus your savings, plus your investment money, and then use that to buy another property a lot faster, pay cash for that, and keep doing it over and over again until you reach the goal that you actually have in mind. And that's something I'm actually going to be doing later this year. So right now I'm saving money. At the end of January, I'll take money from my investment account. I'll grab my savings plus that money and I'll start saving it up. And then I'll buy a property and pay cash for it to try to get at least a return of 8%. And now that brings in cash flow every so month from rental property. This way, right? You have money that's coming in from my income and I should be able to save money from my investments and now money from real estate. This way you're a little more like um, diversified and if something happens here, you're still solid somewhere else. That is the idea. Now, here's the third thing you could actually do to actually save money long-term forever. Um, the answer is going to be guys, okay? Your personal home is also a legitimate investment along with an emergency account. Most people don't see it this way because it's basically, well, Tommy, you're telling me I'm going to invest my money into something and that something is going to pay me out money forever. But my personal home is obviously not going to do that, right? Because it's not really taking money, it's not really giving me any money, I'm actually giving it money. But the answer is, this personal home allows you to be able to actually have more savings and have more security to be able to actually invest with a lot more confidence. So paying off your personal home 
that frees up cash flow. But it also means your cost of living is actually a lot lower. So if you're not spending money on cost of living, in a sense, that's money that's being kept in your pocket. So in a sense, if you look at it that way, it's actually an investment, all right? That is the entire idea. And if you have, for example, your emergency account, which by the way, I believe everyone should try to build up for at least three years. The answer is, if you have, imagine this, okay? If you have three years worth of emergency accounts and the market is down for three years, you'll fine, you're fine. If your tenants don't pay you for three years, you're fine, which is unlikely, right? But the answer is, you're gonna be just fine. The idea is you want to be bulletproof or as much as you can be, right? Because headshots are still a thing. But the answer is you want to be as bulletproof as you possibly can. So when things go wrong and they will go wrong, you'll be just fine. So overall, I will be investing 10, 20% of my money in the S500 forever. And I will start taking money out. Once I have my home paid off, I will use that savings plus the money from the market combine those and start buying rental properties in cash. Now, if your goal is, hey, the properties I'm looking at, they're gonna be like $100,000, Tommy, the answer is every five years or so, you're actually able to buy something in cash. And that is still fine. Every five years, you add an extra $1,000 per month, for example. Well, in this case, it would be like, if you're buying a home for 100K and you're trying to make, let's say, for example, if you're gonna try to make like 7% off this property, the answer is that's 7K, right? So divided by 12, that's around extra like $500 every single month, right? So it's still good money. And that's the idea. And all the money you're making, those are hours you don't have to work anymore. Hours you don't have to work anymore, which actually gives you a lot more freedom to do the things you actually want to do. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Comment down below, made it, so you made it all the way to the end. On top of that, up here is another video. And as always, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified, and peace.